Good morning, folks. NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab has released all their ice on shots from the Deep Impact spacecraft. We have many potential great comets in 2013, and perhaps none greater than ISON set to arrive this fall. Looking back at the 8.0 earthquake yesterday, one of the immediate aftershocks was upgraded to 7.0 by the USGS. There were two other large aftershocks above 6 magnitude as the day wore on, and there have been two such aftershocks this morning. Something pertinent to the quake watch factors? First look at this image taken just after the quake. It occurred at 12.12 local time, just after noon when it hit. Meaning if you were sitting on Santa Cruz Island moment before the earthquake, despite the sun blocking your view, Mercury, Mars, and Neptune would have been conjoined just above your head and just a skew of the sun at that time. The southern corona hole was also directly facing Earth. If you will remember the start of the quake watch, filaments began erupting and part of the umbral field disappeared as the quakes began. You'll remember that after four straight days, the quakes stopped and the field lines returned. Well, they've been on and off since then, but late on the 5th, another tilt to the field presented itself. A decaying active region popped this double eruption one hour before the major quake. And on the right, the field lines recombined and has held steady since then. Ongoing story, updating the Great Lakes water levels as two of them have hit record lows. Here we see another example of how it's not just global warming, it's many types of weather extremes. Australia, few low pressure zones on the north, normally one would expect a chance for inclement weather but I can see that's already begun. Europe has two convergence lines of precipitation off the big pressure systems moving in. That leading low does dip further south and has a chance to bring thunderstorms as well. Quebec showing much colder temperatures than yesterday because a tight blue counterclockwise low with a clockwise spinning high to the left means both pull south from the Arctic where they meet in the middle. In the bread basket we have another story where a solid low pressure system is driving warm air north on the leading edge and that high to the left is helping cold air come down the backside just like we saw in Quebec. Southern states will have a bit of thunderstorms tonight but tomorrow as this storm moves north it could bring as much as two feet of snow over 48 hours. Meanwhile the Weather Channel is also calling for severe weather outbreaks this weekend in Texas and some of the Gulf states. But let's come back to this double eruption. NASA's endless spiral shows a likely Earth miss, but NOAA's endless spiral shows both eruptions and indeed shows an impact to Earth tomorrow morning. So Holasco C3 shows the blasts. But enough of what's on its way to Earth. We had a gamma burst already impact last night from way down south in the Carina constellation. But that's not all that hit last night. It's still too early to tell if this is a little CME, a massive dense solar wind, or the leading edge of a coronal hole stream. We'll know by tomorrow, but it's very dense, and the magnetometers are showing disturbance while baseline inductions have already begun. Electron counts dropping, proton counts rising means the planet is in energetic flux. We got a few developing sunspots on the edge set to turn in. They'll need to eat their Wheaties if they plan to stand strong in an earth-facing position. Don't forget the coronal holes are here and the planets have just begun to align. The quake watch was called for the beginning of February through the 11th, so let's hope we've seen all we're going to get. Lots of plasma filaments posing eruption threat on the earth-facing disk as well. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.